Welcome to the NFL Pick'em Show on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. The NFL Pick'em Show is brought to you by MyBookie.ag. We're at week 17 of the NFL season. I'm your host, Mike Goodpaster. Right now, I want to welcome in my co-host. First up, I guess I, uh, Alex, Alex Golden was the big loser of the week last week. Uh, I think he got 10 games right. The big winner, there was a tie between this man, Matt Andrews Scavage. How's everyone doing? I hear something in the background, but hope everyone's doing good tonight. That's probably Coop getting food or Schmidt getting wine, one of the two. And, of course, the other man it tied for first, Brian Schmidt. How you doing, Brian? I'm doing great, doing great. Ready to uh, make some gigantic picks this week and close my gap on uh, Mr. Uh, – Mr. Andrew Scavage over there, because he's getting a little too big for his britches right now with this whole winning thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that and combined with the 49ers and, you know, having maybe the greatest quarterback that ever lived now compared to 49er fans. But we have a special guest tonight. <laughs> I think he's been gone since week one, played for the Denver Broncos. He is in Canton in the Hall of Fame. At least a picture of him is. Help me welcome to the show, former Denver Bronco, Mark Cooper. How you doing, Coop? Good, man. It's been a while. I, I sorry to miss. Sorry to miss. I've been uh, coaching the eighth grade team that won the national title over at Canton this past week. So they're all pretty all right. happy to get rings. Their names go in the Hall of Fame. All right. Um, we did have an eighth grade junior high coach on a few weeks ago. Brian can tell you that our dealings with junior high coaches have not worked out real well. No, did not work out well at all. Um, <laughs> it, it was, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to have you back because at least you're one of the smarter people ever in the history ever? of junior high football. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> all right, guys, we're going to start well, off with you know this. It's, it's fun having a good time with them kids. All right, let's go. First, first up, the big takeaway for the week, Schmitty. What's your big takeaway this week? My big takeaway for the week uh, we've brought up several times is if Kenny officiating in this league get any worse. Yeah, because every I week it does. That, you just every freaking week, uh, the officiating just terrible. I, I it, it makes watching NFL football. Just, just hard to watch. I mean, it's really hard to watch. Just, I, I, I get so frustrated with it. Uh, just the missed calls, uh, rule interpretations. One game, it's one way. One game, it's another way. Uh, it's, it's just it's very hard to watch. All right. As everybody can tell, Brian's still a little sour over that Patriots Steeler game. Matt, what's your big takeaway from Slightly. this last week? Well, I got to ask uh, Brian because a takeaway would be. Uh, the, pitch, the the New England Patriots uh, snagging uh, James Harrison. I wonder what kind of an impact uh, that'll have in the playoffs. What do you think there, Brian? I, I don't think it'll have hardly much at all. I mean, he's, he's on the downside. Uh, it's not like he's going to give them any secrets they don't already know. Um. I think, you know, it, it looks more of a slap in the face, but Pittsburgh wouldn't have released him if it really mattered that much. I mean, you had to know you released him, the good chance Patriots were going to try to snag him up. I, I just, I, you know, I, I noticed on Facebook people were having a, you know, coronary over it. I'm thinking to myself, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, yeah Coop, what yeah, do you think? I don't think? think it's that big of a deal either. What do you think, Coop? We need a uh, takeaway from me is we need a new coach in Denver, and we need a uh, need a bad because this uh, Vance Joseph out here is a pretender. And uh, matter of fact, I think we might call that that high, middle school coach that you guys had a tough time with, and maybe we can get him out here. <laughs> no, you uh, won't. Uh, no, no, you won't. Because he'll bring AJ Not McCarron sure with him. Because he's convinced AJ McCarron. McCarron's going to be a Pro Bowl quarterback. Okay, that maybe won't pass on him too, but I did that. <laughs> listen, just, listen, do do yourself a favor. If it's going to come down between him and a monkey, choose the monkey. There you go. Oh. All right. Well, hey, Coop, did you see Brock Osweiler 
yelling at the offensive line to get them all hyped up and they acted like he wasn't even there? <laughs> yeah, it's, like I said, we got a lot of bad things going on out here. So, so Coop, is this, is this really fair to blame the head coach when you bring him into a situation with nothing even resembling a starting NFL quarterback or an offensive line? Well, you know, I, I don't. I'm not going to blame it on the quarterbacks, to be honest with you, because if the, if they're, I mean, they're back there just getting their heads knocked off. And this offensive line is bad, and it's not been coached all year again, and it's just disappointing. Because um, when you're not making, you know, you're not chipping a guy when you got a right tackle that can't play, and you're not chipping, and you're not doing anything to help those guys, and you're going to let your quarterbacks get beat up like they have all year here, um, you got to, you need a new coaching staff. Yeah, but is that the coaching staff, or is that the lack of getting the proper yeah. players in there? Well, yeah, of course you got to get. Well, there, you know, there weren't a lot of tackles around the league to choose from over the past two years. To be perfectly honest with you, so um, you know they've tried to do make do with what they've had. But again, you're supposed to get better as an offensive lineman during the year, and these guys are not. Matter of fact, Bowles is getting worse because he's kick stepping so hard, he's getting pushed right back into the quarterback now. Instead of taking a little bit of a 45 angle, 45 degree angle, and taking guys on a lot sooner because you can't stop a freight train, you know. It's just physics. Yeah, and they're bad on the offensive line. There's a lot of teams bad on the offensive line. You look at teams like the Giants and Bengals the, and the Seahawks even. Those are three teams with Super Bowl skill position players that the offensive line's terrible. And even when you're working with a Russell Wilson, who's a Pro Bowl quarterback, there's only so much you can do, and you're not getting to the Super Bowl with an offensive line that bad. Yeah, well, that's that's the determining factor, seems like to me anymore. Yeah, and my take on the James Harrison thing is that's probably more of a Belichick mind game than anything else, Matt. Because really, Schmitty, yeah. Harrison was only getting about 20, 25 snaps a game when he was playing, wasn't he? If, yeah, if that. Uh, you know, it, it, it's not that Harrison – can't play it's there were better options it, it, you know I mean let's face it they're they're looking uh, you know you're looking for the future and you're looking at what you have and, and you're gonna go with the younger guys he he was signed as a security blanket that at this point they really don't need so it's all it is I, I you know people are just way too uh, jumping that this is you know, this is going to put New England in, in the Super Bowl, and it's funny when Miami fi- fans say that. But, <laughs> Chris uh, Cook, game day <laughs> IQ. I know. I responded to that, so, and he left it alone. So, Yeah. But it, it is what See, it But is. even I, with Ryan Shazier being out, you didn't feel like that James Harrison added depth and uh, would, would have gotten more snaps with him being out? I, th- I, think, it, I, I think it could have, but I think they're – they're at a point right now where, where they feel comfortable with what they have. And, uh, yeah. you know, obviously adding Gilbert back was, was key to make that move. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, I think people are a little bit more jumping about it than they should. It's not that it's really not that big of a deal and it doesn't really hurt Pittsburgh one way or the other. Yeah. And the bigger yeah. question is this, how much does Bill Belichick hate Robert Kraft that he traded away Jacoby Brissett and Jimmy Garoppolo for next to nothing? Boy, that's a good theory. I, I mean, I, it has to be week. that. And, I mean, he turned down getting a first-round pick from Cleveland for Garoppolo to send him to San Francisco for a less trade. And I, I just think that Belichick's not a big fan of Kraft. He knows he's gone when Brady's gone, so he wants to make sure there's nothing left for Kraft. Am I, not I don't really understand that story. What happened there? Well, I, I think this in general, I think Robert Kraft is just not a great man. So I think there's more than just one or two stories there, but I don't well, what know. What did he do to Belichick? Did he, cause I heard Colin Cowherd say something like this and he said that he, he, that Belichick felt that Kraft chose Brady over Belichick. Yeah. But there was a comment. How. There was a comment like a year, year and a half ago where Kraft made the offhanded remark that they would still be winning if they didn't have Belichick, 
but without Brady, they wouldn't be. Oh, got it. So, all right, yeah, let's go I, ahead. I remember that. Let's get to this week's games. Game one is a epic clash between the Cincinnati Bengals on a one-game winning streak at the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens are favored by 11. Now, on the outside, this looks like the Ravens should win the game easy because you wouldn't think the Bengals have anything to play for. But if the Bengals win this week, they'll clinch having a better record than the San Francisco 49ers, which is very important to the Bengals. Matt, you get the Bengals or the Ravens. <laughs> yeah, that is very important. I, I, I know that uh, um, we've been hearing a lot of talk coming out of Cincinnati about how they got to make sure that they're a little bit better than San Francisco this year. So and they got a lot to play for. So uh, in this case, though, so I'm going to go with the Ravens. I don't uh, – I wouldn't be – Totally shocked if the Bengals won just because they were able to outplay Detroit last week or this past week and uh, just show that they they got a little bit of fight in them. I don't know exactly what they would be playing for. Uh, you were talking about how maybe they want Lewis gone so they'd lay down. Uh, I wasn't sure. I totally saw that this past week, but uh, it's a division game. It's still a rivalry. They might be up for that game, but I, I don't know. What, can Baltimore move up at all? Um, win. No, but they still got a clinch to playoffs. If they lose and a couple of those other teams win, they can be out, right? Okay, then then no, definitely. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Baltimore is going to win just because if you win, if they win, they're in, <clears throat> and uh, it's important to them. So I, I think that I really don't see how they would lose that if they got to win. Yeah, I'm picking the Ravens. Also, I'm hoping to God the Bengals lose this game because if Marvin gets a two game winning streak and he's seven and nine. Mike Brown may give him a five-year <laughs> contract. Um, Coop, Bengals That's at Ravens. That's a improvement over last year, too. Yeah. <laughs> Coop, Bengals at Ravens. I'm taking the Ravens because um, uh, I figure that Cincinnati and Denver will be, you know, basically in the dog pile at the bottom of this whole Well, I would like to bring up the, the Bengals are a couple games ahead of the Broncos and beat the Broncos in Denver. Yeah, I know it. Okay. <clears throat> I know it. But now the Ra- you know the Ravens uh, the Ravens have just I think they just have a more solid team. Not that they're a world beater of any sorts either. So, uh, but they played some close games this year. So I'm going with the Ravens. All right, Schmitty. Oh, uh, I, Ravens. Uh, at this point, yeah, you know, I, I I don't know that the Bengals showed it wasn't so much fight as just how bad uh, Detroit played. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Detroit played horrible. I mean, watching that game was uh, – that was not what I was expecting at all. Uh, Ravens are going to win this. I, I, you know, I think that all Bengal fans are going to get their wish. and Because uh, if, if, if Marvin Lewis comes back next year, I, I invite all Bengals fans to just, just become either Steelers or Browns fans because they you – know, Browns? That's terrible. Browns? Browns. So it would be better to cheer for a team that keeps a one in thirty-one Hugh Jackson. <laughs> At this point, I almost would because that that that's a slap in the face. Plus, you're also Browns, just I mean, hoping they're... Bengals fans come to Pittsburgh because if Bengal fans start cheering for Pittsburgh, it'll drive the IQ of Steeler fans through the roof. Um, Coop, well, next game, the no, Green it'll bring Brian. Down. Brian, it's time for Coop to answer. Okay. <laughs> Coop, oh, the Green sorry. Bay Packers at the Detroit Lions. <laughs> Detroit is favored by seven. Yeah, they are. Um, and like I think Matt said, you know, he thought they he, he thought they played uh, didn't play that well last week or did play well, whatever. Matt, they were terrible. I, I, I'm going with Detroit. I, for, I forget what Matt said, but uh, and Smitty I think countered it a little bit. But I'm going to go with Detroit. Um, Green Bay's been. Again, another helter-skelter team. You know, and usually if I pick Green Bay, they lose. So I'm going to stick with Detroit this time. All right. I'm going to go with Detroit also. I, I I may take the seven points in the Packers the way Detroit looked last week. Oh, they still get no pass rush. They have no running game. If it wasn't for Matthew Stafford, this is a two- or three-win team. Schmitty? Yeah, I agree. I'm going to take the Lions. Schmitty's um, eating. He didn't know he was going next. <laughs> <laughs> Quite honestly, I, I don't think I don't think you can ever pick Green Bay. So uh, I'm going with the Lions. All right, Matt. Yeah, I think you got to go with the Lions here. The Packers seem to be uh, resting as much to, as they can, illegally putting people on IR as much as they can, and doing whatever they can. So uh, I think the Lions will just uh, be able to pull it out just because they're at home. 
Ooh, I like that little knife twist on Packer fans by the guy that lives in Wisconsin. The next game, the Buffalo Bills, who need a win and a little bit of help to get into playoffs. They're three-point favorites at Miami, Schmitty. Yeah, I'm going to take Buffalo. Um, they need help, but, God, Miami needs more help. Um, Miami <laughs> had their great opportunity and did some things uh, you know, a couple weeks ago against New England, but – they're just, again, they're just one of those teams that you, you just really don't expect anything from them. And, you know, Buffalo is going to try to come out of this and, and you can get a win here and, you know, hope to get some help. So, yeah, I'll go with Buffalo. All right, Matt. Yeah, I think I'll go with Buffalo as well. I, I think Schmitty's right. Miami's pretty much beyond help. Uh, Buffalo. They would they would need a, a helping hand to get in the playoffs, but you got to get yourself you got to take care of business, do what you can to to get in the playoffs first. So that would mean they have to beat Miami. I would expect them to do so. Uh, I don't expect it to be an exciting game, but I think Buffalo's to grind it out. Yeah, I'm going to take the Bills in this one too. I'll take Tyrod Taylor over Jay Cutler and Lashawn McCoy over whatever Miami's got. Um, Coop. Well, you know how much I like Cutler, so you know I'm picking the Bills. <laughs> <laughs> well, you used to hate Philip Rivers too, and then you came around. No coming around on Cutler yet. No, no. I think it's impossible to come around on Cutler. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. He wanted to be an announcer. Like he wanted to be an announcer. And now he's in a, in a, he's all suited up this year. And he played doing the same he played thing. One good done. game this year, though. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. He always plays one to just to keep himself in the in the running. Yeah. All right. The next game, maybe the game of the week, or at least one of the games of the week, the Carolina Panthers, who've already <laughs> clinched the playoff spot at the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons are favored by four. I'll start this one off. I'm going to go with the Falcons. They need to win. They've played like crap this year, but I don't think Carolina's got a lot to play for here, play for in this game. So I'm going to take the Falcons, Coop. Coop? You coming back to me? Yeah. Yeah, boy, that's a tough one. I mean, that's a tough one because Carolina's had its spurts. Atlanta's had its spurts. I, I like Atlanta. I think Atlanta, you know, has to have the win. Um, Carolina, God, they, I mean, this will be a good game. I mean, I think this will be a good game between, you know, two battling teams, and, and I think the Panthers are favored in this, but I'm going to go with Atlanta. All right, Matt. Yeah, I'm going to go with Atlanta as well. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, if, if New Orleans – loses and, and Carolina wins. Doesn't Carolina clinch the South? Yeah, but New Orleans is not going to lose. <laughs> not the Tampa Bay. No, I agree with you. Um, I, but yeah, I there, there's Atlanta still a wins. chance. There's still a chance, I think. Yeah. I just don't think – I don't think Carolina has looked especially good. Uh, I don't know that Atlanta has looked especially good the last two games either. But being at home, knowing you got to get in, I would also take um, – their coach over Ron, Ron Rivera. Uh, overall, I, I don't. I, I'm just not sure. I mean, there are times where the last couple of games, there are times where Cam Newton's actually made some really good plays. Got to give him credit, but I, I just think Atlanta's going to find a way to get this done. So All right. Atlanta by three. Schmitty. Atlanta. Uh, I, I got to wonder, you know, how much Carolina is going to, you know, they're going to arrest people. What are they going to do? And you know, how much emotion they're going to put into this game, uh, being they're already clinched. And I, and I just, I think Atlanta is going to come out. They, you know, try to get a little bit more fire, you know, Atlanta has just been that team. You know, we, we talk about that Super Bowl hangover and, and there are people that say it doesn't happen. I, I think Atlanta is a, is a huge proof that it does. Uh, they've looked good at times. They've looked God awful at times. Uh, this is one I think they'll win, but, but it's going to be interesting to see, if they do make the playoffs, what kind of team they're going to be in the playoffs because cause they've been so up and down. All right, the next game, I'm going to let the man that played for the team start us off with the pick. We've got the New Orleans Saints at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Coop. <laughs> man, I'll tell you what. Um, I, I hate, to, hate to pick against Tampa Bay, and we all thought they were going to be uh, – you know, an up and coming team last year when we had a few conversations about them and they've done nothing, you know what I mean? And New Orleans has really kind of come on and played some pretty good football this year. Last year, you know, you, it would, I would have called this a toss up, but this year I'm going to stick with the saints. All right. Schmitty. 
Brian? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah. good. Uh, I, am, I am going with the Saints. Uh, Tampa Bay has just been terrible. Um, you know, the Saints are going to play this to, to, you know, get themselves ready, uh, you know, have a nice week off. And, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I just don't see Tampa Bay having any chance in this. I think Tampa Bay is already packing, getting ready to get into the off season. Yeah, I'm going to take the Saints, too. And the thing that makes me think that this Saints team is a real threat is what their defense did to Atlanta last week, Matt. Yeah, I would agree with you. Uh, I watched uh, – I was I, I was very interested in that game. I, I like both teams. I'll be honest with you, though. Uh, you know, with my little emotion in, uh, involved, I really wanted to see Atlanta win just to get Seattle out of there. But I enjoyed the game. I thought I, I was impressed with New Orleans defense, especially Marcus Lattimore. Uh, what a good rookie season, and uh, getting that uh, what are they they're calling it the butt interception? <laughs> how that how that ball just died right on the back of his leg. Uh, but it, they just made they made a lot of big plays when they needed to. And what's really impressed me besides their defense with New Orleans is the way that they're getting so much production out of their ground game. I mean, Mark Ingram is having a great season. Alvin Kamara is really tough to stop. He's a dual threat out of the backfield. And it just opens so much up for a veteran quarterback like Drew Brees being able to find all those wide receivers. So they're, they're hard to beat on offense. They've got a more improved defense. Uh, I really don't see any way uh, Tampa Bay uh, is going to be in this game. And the interesting thing about this is if New Orleans wins, I think they're the early game and both the Falcons uh, game and the Seahawks game are the late game. So no, Carolina the, Saint, the Saints are a 4 o'clock game. Really? So yeah, that would all, mean all, all play three at are at the same time. So that yeah. I don't know if Carolina's going to rest anybody then. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I thought I, New, I thought New that, Orleans was that, noon. No, they're a four o'clock game. All three games are four o'clock. Wow. When the NFL I forgot about that, when the NFL changed all the times, they they put all yeah. the uh, all the playoff potential games. They did all the four o'clock. Yeah, I forgot completely about that. To stop something like that from happening. Right. All right. Well, I'm still going to go with the Saints here. But, yeah, that'll be interesting. All right. Next up, another big game. The Jacksonville Jaguars have already clinched the AFC South. Look like they're locked into number three spot. We'll go to the Tennessee Titans. The Titans have to win to make the playoffs. let's Let's go Coop. Coop. Jacksonville at Tennessee. We'll let you start off twice in a row. Yeah. I'm a. Again, you know, another Tennessee team that we thought a year ago was going to be up and coming and win the division and all that kind of stuff, and they've just they just haven't made it happen. So I'm I'm gonna stick with Jacksonville, even though they you know they they're all, they can almost coast into this thing. But um, Tennessee just again has not impressed me all year long and just hasn't put anything together that's you know made them uh, you know come around. So I just I'm gonna stick with Jacksonville. All right, Matt. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Jacksonville as well. I, I think uh, they were – I don't think they were expecting exactly what uh, happened to them last week. I think they they wanted to come out and play a little bit better. Uh, this is the kind of week where, you know, unless you're Jay Cutler, you, you, you want to keep a division full out of the playoffs. And I think this would be a, a prime opportunity for them to kind of rebound from last week and then also hurt a division opponent by keeping them out of the postseason. So – uh, I'll go with Jaguars here. Titans just have not been good at all. All right. I'm going to go with the Titans. Um, the Jaguars have nothing to play for. The Titans, this is their season. And the Titans last week played really well against the Rams. If they played away or at the level they played last week, they'll beat the Jaguars. The Jaguars are a good defensive football team. Blake Bortles is an average quarterback who tends to turn the ball over. I think Bortles will throw a couple to the Titans. Marriott will do just enough to get the win. Brian? I'm going to go with the Titans and kind of everything that, that Mike just said. But, but the one thing about about Jacksonville is they, they won the season because of their defense and their running game. Uh, last week showed if you if the game is on Bortles' shoulder, shoulders that you have to – that, that he has to make plays, he can't. Uh, they have to rely on their defense and their running game to be able to win. And in this game, there's nothing to play for. Tennessee's playing for something. Uh, I don't. I don't feel like they're they're really going to be putting a whole lot of, of effort into this. Uh, 
I think Tennessee will steal one uh, coming into this. All right. Next up, we got the biggest point spread of the week, I think. We got the New York Jets at the New England Patriots. The Patriots are favored by 15 and a half. The Patriots have got pretty much everything clinched after they win this game. And I'll tell you, Todd Bowles, I think, has done as good a job with this Jets team as anybody did this year with any team. Um, I don't think too many people thought they'd win more in a game or two. I think they're sitting at five wins. And without Josh McNown getting hurt, I think he'd be at six or seven right now. I think he's done a really good job. I think the Jets will cover to 15 and a half points, but the Patriots win the game. Matt? Yeah, I feel like the same, I feel the same thing. I, you, know, you watch the Jets. Uh, I think we were talking at the beginning of the year, uh, you had uh, everyone picking the Patriots to go undefeated, and you had the Jets were the team everyone's going to pick to go 0-16 with the Browns probably going 1-15. and 15. But the Jets have really surpassed expectations. They they seem to have a couple of different running backs that, uh, you know, you know Powell will have a big game, and I forgot the name of the, uh, the other newcomer this year that's played pretty well, and Forte's played well. They've gotten a lot of production out of Robbie Anderson. The defense has played better. I, I, I feel like the, the, the coaching has been a, a big part of that. But like you said, the Patriots will win. They get to box everything up, but – I, I think the skin could be a little closer than what we think. All right, Coop. Well, the Jets, I mean, it just couldn't beat the Chargers. And, I mean, you know, the Patriots, just, they, they just keep just – they're mind-boggling. I mean, they're they're a no-name team that just year after year puts puts guys in position to play good football and wins, and wins consistently. I mean, it's tough to – it's just tough to bet against New England. So, obviously, I'm taking the Patriots. All right, Schmitty, you want to go with the Jets because you need them to win so bad? I would love to, but uh, well, you can. Don't be afraid. Would, Don't be scared. If I was three, if I was three games up, I might. But nah, in this case, I'm going to take take the correct route, and I'll take New England. But my thing is, <laughs> does the head coach for the Jets should he not be? coach of the year in the NFL for the job that he's done. Gotta, even he, though you got to go Mike Zimmer on that. Well, there's a lot of yeah, guys I this mean, year. But I guess this year, I think half the coaches are up for coach of the year and the other half are all going to be fired. That's probably about right. Yeah. But I just think the job he's the Rams the, I mean, and the, the Vikings, though. I would say this. The difference between the Vikings and, and Jets and, and yeah, you know, I kind of I, you probably the Rams would probably be even the, you know a good choice. But the thing is, is, you know, we talked about we weren't the only people talking about how bad the Jets were going to be. Uh, yeah. Any any NFL preview shows, you know, the Jets were were in line for to to you know maybe even be worse than the Browns, and and to have them where where they are, I, I mean that to me, yes, I know he won't win it. But to me, he's the coach of the year, uh, just what he's done. So, All right, guys, real quick, we got a few more games to pick. We'll be back with the legendary Houston Texans at the Indianapolis Colts game, where if you go on StubHub, you can actually get tickets for like five bucks a piece right now. Right after this word from mybookie.ag, we'll be back in a minute. Hey, Puckheads, this is Patrick and Jason from the Puck Guys podcast at the Grueling Truth Network, and we're here with one simple message. If you're watching the games, it's time to start making money. The Grueling Truth has partnered with MyBookie.ag, an industry-leading sportsbook website who reminds you that where you bet is just as important and as who you're betting on. And that's why the Grueling Truth urges you to check out MyBookie.ag. In addition to the usual thousands of odds, money lines, proposition bets, and futures offered on MyBookie.ag daily, they also have in-game live betting and a mobile site that makes wagering on the go easier than ever. So join now and MyBookie.ag will give you a 50% bonus on your first deposit of up to $3,000 in extra cash. Just enter the promo code TGT50. That's TGT50 to take advantage of this offer. Where do they got to go, Jay? That is a smart-looking question, Pat. They need to go to visit MyBookie.ag, courtesy of the Grueling Truth Network, and enjoy your winning today. MyBookie.ag. You play, you win, you get paid. All right, guys, we're back on the weekly NFL Pick'em Show on the Grueling Truth Sports Network, of course, brought to you by MyBookie.ag. Go to thegruelingtruth.net, click on the banner. It'll take you directly there. You can bet on the playoff games this weekend. 
or not, well, the college playoff games and the last week of the NFL season. I'm here with former Bronco Buccaneer, Mark Cooper. I'm here with Brian Schmidt and, of course, Matt Andrew Scavage, as always. The next game, the Houston Texans at the Indianapolis Colts. Schmitty. Good God. Can they can they just give tickets away? Is it even five bucks? Would anybody pay five bucks for this? I don't think so. I mean, it's pretty oh. bad. This is bad. Ah, yeah. I'm going to flip a coin. Wait, no, I'm not. I'm going to flip my remote. Hold on. Hold on. All right, front side of the remote is uh, Indy. The back side is Houston. All right, no, I didn't like that. I'll go with Indy. All right. Um, <laughs> Coop. <laughs> Uh, this is could this be being the toilet bowl game or what? Because I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna uh, flip Matt and, <laughs> and hit. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going Houston. I'm, I'm going Houston just because I don't. I, I, the, the Colts are just <laughs> they, haven't done, they haven't done anything all year. Neither is Houston, but I got, I'm going to say the Colts are worse. So I'm well, I'll tell you, I think if Deshaun Watson, J.J. Watt, them guys don't get hurt, you're looking at a 10 or 11 win team right now, Coop. Yeah, I agree. But you're not, so <clears throat> we're not. Uh, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to go with the Colts here. Uh, I Just because they're at home. Yeah. I, I, I was I hoping you'd go I mean, the other ugly. way. I need to pick up another game. <laughs> I'm four back now. I'm getting two. desperate, but not desperate enough to pick the Texans. I'm taking the Colts also. Yeah. Yeah. I just Colts by three. I mean, it'd probably be nine to six or something really bad, but just because just, just they're at home, I'll just give it. You know, Terry's there, so <laughs> it's ugly. All right. Next up, Coop, the Cleveland Browns at the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Cleveland Browns have a chance to be only the third team to have a winless NFL season, right up there with the 76 bucks, which you had nothing to do with because you were 11 years later. I just wanted to bring that up. And, of course, the Detroit Lions back in the late 2000s. I think it was 2008. Do the Browns go 0-16, Coop? Yeah, unfortunately they do. And I'll tell you what, I really like Pittsburgh this year. I mean, they're, they've been fun to watch. I mean, they got jipped by uh, the Patriots. But, um, you know, they're playing solid football in Ben. <laughs> You know Ben's Ben. I mean Ben's just uh, just is what a brawler. I mean I, I really I really like that guy. So yeah. uh, and I got a lot of Pittsburgh buddies, so I I can't desert them. So I'm going to stick with the Steelers. All right, talking about a Pittsburgh buddy, Schmitty. Yeah, uh, Pittsburgh's going to win this. But uh, interesting, uh, read this earlier today. They were they were talking about. Ben stats over the last uh, four or five games, and uh, it, it's a shame that he started out the way he did because I mean he's playing at a huge MVP level right now, uh, and 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 I really you know want to see this continue. And obviously, it's really going to be key that having that week off is going to be huge for them getting Antonio Brown back. But uh, they really stepped up yesterday. I, I, I'll tell you, it was a game yesterday that I was a little nervous about. And um, they really stepped up offensively. And, I, and and you really are starting to see a lot of these guys come together. Now the big thing is we just got to either A, win a Super Bowl, or B, and or B, we got to get we got to get our offensive coordinator out of there because I guarantee you Ben will retire if they end up keeping that moron around. Well, I hope they keep him. Um, I'm going to go with the Pittsburgh Steelers also, and I don't know why you would be worried playing the Houston Texans who have no quarterback, Schmitty. You, we all know how Pittsburgh plays on the road against bad teams. But, you know, at least Chicago's got Mitch Trubisky. I watched all that game yesterday, and I'm still not sure who Houston's quarterback is. Me neither. <laughs> I mean, they had a dude from, like, where the hell was he from? A D3 school or something? And maybe Savage played, and I think Frank Gifford took the last few snaps. <laughs> Pastorini. Damn Pastorini. Don't make fun of Dan. He was on the show. He's a good guy. And he was the first I interview know. we did that had like a thousand listens, and me and Matt were really excited back then. <laughs> I remember people. you called me. I don't think I ever heard you so happy. I know, and you were too, because you didn't believe me when I told I you. I was, but it was shocking. All right, next up, Matt. 
Uh, yeah, I go with Pittsburgh here. It's, I mean, if this is anything like week one, that would be a stunner. But I, I got to believe Pittsburgh is going to get it done. Uh, I don't think – they can't really – Pittsburgh, if they lost, that, they they wouldn't go down if Jacksonville No, they're won, fine. Correct? They're fine. They're two games ahead of no, Jacksonville, I think. Okay. I forget what the standings are on that one. But, yeah, I, Pittsburgh is uh, – they're not going to lose to the Browns. I mean, they, that would just be pretty bad. So, Browns are terrible. They're going to win 16, so I'll go with Pittsburgh. All right, next up. This could be a tough game to pick, Schmitty. The Washington Redskins and Kirk <clears throat> Cousins at the New York Giants. The Redskins are favored by three. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with the Redskins only because of, A, how bad bad the Giants have been overall, and B, I, I, from what I read today, uh, pretty much the whole Giants secondary will pretty much not be playing in this game from what it sounded like. So, right. Uh, I'm going to, you know, I'll go with Washington. All right, Coop? Yeah, uh, Washington and Cousins will just pick apart uh, the Giants. I mean, they, they play. They're they're a pretty good football team, and not because they beat the Broncos, but they. I mean, they have a pretty good. Yeah. The offensive coordinator there does a decent job of spreading it around, and Cousins seems to make some pretty good decisions on his own, and and he can get out of the pocket too when he needs to. So I'm going to stick with Washington. All right, um, I'm going to go with Washington also, Matt. Yeah, Washington. Uh, you could see maybe the Giants put up a fight, but I saw the same report uh, that Smitty was talking about. I mean, when you don't have your secondary, uh, the Redskins still have some weapons out there. Crowder's going to play. Vernon Davis will play. Uh, you know, they're going to get something out of those guys. And, uh, you know, Cousins is a good quarterback. So you could see the Giants maybe being a little inspired, but they're pretty uh, shorthanded this week. All right, next up we got Chicago Bears at the Minnesota Vikings, Matt. Um, I don't know if Minnesota has anything to play for, but I don't see them losing. Uh, yeah, I think Philly boxed everything up yesterday, but yeah, I think did. Philly or uh, I think Minnesota is going to still try to win. They'll, you know, they'll probably rest some guys, but I just don't think the Bears are good enough, uh, at least with what they've got going on with the guys that they've lost. Uh, it's in Minnesota. I think Minnesota will just find a way to win. Their their defense, even with some of their backups, are really good. So, we'll go with Minnesota. Yeah, I'm going with Minnesota also, Schmidt. Yeah, I'm going with Minnesota. I I think Minnesota is a, a huge possibility, uh, a, a team to kind of latch on to in the NFC to possibly uh, be in a Super Bowl. <clears throat> yeah, and I thought it was great when you had them at Lambeau Field with all their fans chanting Skull, pissing off the Green Bay Packer fans. That was pretty that funny. That was great. <laughs> yeah, because everybody hates the Packers fans. Um, Coop, Bears at the Vikings. Yeah, Vikes. Uh, that's Denver North up there. So uh, I, I take Minnesota. I'm not a big Fox fan and his staff, et cetera. So um, we're going to stick with the Vikes. All right, next up, Schmitty, the Dallas Cowboys at the Philadelphia Eagles. I imagine the Eagles will be sitting some people this week also. Yeah, I would imagine they would. Uh, and for that reason, I will take the Cowboys uh, with the idea that they're, that Philadelphia will sit some people, and rightfully so, they should. Uh, yeah. So I'll take the Cowboys. Uh, okay. Just just from the standpoint, God, I hate taking the Cowboys, but I, I think that with, with Philadelphia sitting enough people, I, I think the the Cowboys will be able to squeeze one out. All right. So Schmitty thinks the Cowboys (laughs) are going to take a poop in this one. Coop, you, what do you think? You know what? I'm, I'm tending to lean that way myself. Um, And I hate picking the Cowboys too. I mean, but last week it was kind of, I mean, Des, Des is a joke on the sideline and uh, you know, Ezekiel almost carried for a hundred yards, you know, against the Seahawks. So I think they've got enough firepower. Philadelphia sits their guys; they could win this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and pick Dallas as well. All right, Matt. Yeah, I, I, Dallas should win this game. Uh, the only question is: is uh, is there anything that lets you that 
lends you thinking to believe that maybe they want Jason Garrett out of there. I, I don't, I don't really know if they don't like him or not, but if they did, you could see them maybe laying down, but uh, I, I think they'll just, you know, they're out of the playoffs now at the, you know, if, if everything's kosher, then, then they'll probably go out, go all out to win. And while Philly sits guys, so I'll take Dallas. Yeah. Same here. It's kind of an exhibition game for one team and for the other game, other team, it's a little bit more important. I just think Dallas has to be embarrassed after this last week. They'll go out and take advantage of a Philadelphia team. It's a little shorthanded. Um, next up, we've got the Oakland Raiders at the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers still have a shot to make the playoffs, Coop. Oh, come on. You know how I like Phillips. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm oh, you Phillip Rivers. That, oh, Oakland, yeah, so it's, Oakland, Oakland. I'll tell you what. I thought, I thought they were going to. I mean, take the division this past year. I mean, they, you know, they, they got beat by the Eagles last week. What was that, I think ten, nineteen to ten or something. And and they just haven't found a way to win this year. Um, so I'm going to stick with the Chargers. Yeah, to me, until they switch who the coach is, they're just a fringe playoff team until they get rid of him. Not a big Del Rio fan. Um, I'm going to go with the Chargers also. I don't know if they'll cover the eight points because they haven't really played that great as of late either with the Kansas City loss, barely slipping by the Jets. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Chargers here just because I think it's a little bit more important to them. Matt? Yeah, exactly. They got to win. You got to, you know, teams that have to win this week, you got you got to lean towards. Uh, just San Diego is, has played better overall lately than uh, Oakland has. Oakland just hasn't really been good all year. Uh, I would agree that with you guys, you've been talking all year about Jack Del Rio, and uh, I, I just think he's really held them back. And uh, I don't know exactly what, what the problem would be beyond him. They're just not the same team they were last year at all. And remember, and, uh, last, year, last yeah. year I was saying the same thing, even when they were doing good. Yeah, I don't really know exactly what uh, what, what made them do so well last year, and I really don't know exactly if, it's, if there's anything beyond Jack Del Rio as to why they're not playing well this year, but uh, they're, they're just not that great of a team. They, they look like they need a reboot. Chargers, uh, they look like they're coming together. It's just too bad that Phillip Rivers is uh, is getting old because if he was younger, that, that this team would be very interesting to watch All right, over Schmitty. the next couple of years. Yeah, I'm going to take the Chargers, but, but going back to, to what – Matt and Mike were saying, my, my thoughts on Del Rio have always been the same as, as Mike, but I think the difference between last year and, and this year is, if you remember going into last year, there was really no expectation. Uh, Del Rio has had a history, it seems, that when there's no expectations, all of a sudden things go well. But as soon, coming into this year, I mean, there was Super Bowl talk. And yeah. he's yep. not a Super Bowl head coach. And no, Jaguars. That. Jaguars 2005, yeah. Schmitty. Nobody expected anything. They made the playoffs. He never went again. Yep. Exactly. It's the same. It, it, the, the mo has been the same on him his whole career, and and I think that they'll never get to the next level as long as he's the head coach. Uh, so uh, that's just kind of my opinion on it. But but I, I'm going to take Chargers. All right. Next game, we got the Arizona Cardinals against Matt's favorite team, the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks need a win. If they get that win and get a little help from Carolina against Atlanta, they will make the playoffs. Um, I'll start this one off. Seattle's favored by nine. They're at home, but I think they've lost at least two or three games at home this year. Arizona, I mean, Drew Stanton didn't play terrible last week, but it was against the Giants. I'm going to go with Seattle here. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, you got to go with Seattle here. They're at home. Arizona, while I would love to see inspired football out of Arizona, uh, I think you only really get that with this roster uh, in their place. I just don't see them going into Seattle with uh, everything that Seattle has to do. The, the fact that Seattle was able to go to Dallas and and get a win, they were able to make the plays. Des Bryant uh, really, really peed away that game. And just played into Seattle's hands perfectly. And you know, when when you got to make a big play, I, I you can't really knock Russell Wilson. He the guy makes big plays. And uh, the defense, even though it's shorthanded, is good enough to win in, in these situations. So you got to go with Seattle in a game like this. All right, Coop. 
Yeah, I mean Russell Wilson and that defense, um they played pre- they've been they played pretty well last week too. And um so uh, Arizona just hasn't impressed me. Stanton hasn't done much. You know, Larry Fitzgerald's been fun to watch, but um I'm sticking with Seattle. Schmitty? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna take the same pick, Seattle. Uh they've got something to play for. They're at home. Uh that that makes them a dangerous team against anybody, but Arizona, I, I don't believe Arizona will be able to keep up with them. All right, next up, we got Coop's old team, the Denver Broncos, hosting the Kansas City Chiefs. Denver's favored by three and a half. Coop, <laughs> oh my God, Kansas City is a better football team by far, and uh, I feel bad for Denver and. But you know what? We're, we'll just move up one more notch in the uh, in the draft. So I'm going with Kansas City. All right, Matt. It's Kansas, Kansas City clinched the division, and they can't really move up, right? No, they can't catch anybody. No, yeah. and so they they're, can't they're, fall. I don't know if Kansas City's got anything to play for in this game. Uh, they're the four seed. I, no matter what happens, they're the four seed. Yeah, I, I don't know, <sighs> boy. I don't know if Denver goes all out just to try just to beat a division rival, but I don't know. This is I, I we'll go with a kicking battle, and I kind of like both kickers, but I'll just go with KC by three. I, I really have no idea in this game. All right, Brian. <sighs> you know, in normal circumstances, I would pick KC, but. Being that they have nothing to play for, I'm two games back, and what the hell, I might as well go broke. I'm going to pick Denver. Yeah, and and I'm going with the same thing you are for the same freaking reasons, Brian. So (laughs) I'm going to take Denver also. And that means me and Matt disagreed twice today so far, right, Matt? (laughs) Both in games where nothing's really going to (laughs) happen. Yeah, but what could happen is I could win them both and be two games back. Schmitty be a game back, and it sets up a great playoff run. All right, next up, we've got the much ballyhoo Jimmy Garoppolo and the San Francisco 49ers at the Los Angeles Rams. And, of course, Matt has to pick this game first since he is a 49er fan. I am. Uh, I'm – I'm glad I was wrong last week, although I wish I had picked them. I, it was just didn't seem like uh, the kind of game where, you know, Jacksonville would just lay it, you know, just not play all that great and get outplayed. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is a really good quarterback. Uh, I'm excited about the, the future of the, of the team. I'm excited about the rivalry uh, in the coming years against the Rams, but the Rams are further along in the process. Uh, the only thing is I, they're tied with the same. I think they got something to play for here, don't they? Um, I cannot answer that question for you at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to believe. I think the Rams and the Saints are playing for the three and the four seed. Um, so I'm going to go with the Rams. I don't like it. <laughs> I'd rather see the Niners win. Uh, I think the Niners could win this game. But the Rams are further in the process. They got Todd Gurley, who's just playing out of his mind right now. If the Rams have any reason to play for anything, uh, they're just a, they're just better. And you know they've got they've got more guys healthy, and uh, they just they right at this moment they've got a better roster. And uh, so I'll, I'll I'll go with the Rams, but would not be surprised. I expect Jimmy Grapple to play well again. I mean they're playing like they're in the playoffs. That's that's what they that's what the coach wants them to do. They want them to play with playoff intensity. They're going all out. They're trying really hard to win games, and they're playing really well right now. But I don't think they're going to, you know, keep this going five games in a row uh, and, and then knock off a team like the Rams. All right, Schmitty. I really want to take the 49ers in this um, because they, because of the fact, I mean, how much do the Rams have to play for? How much they run? Hey, plus play, the fact but... you could pick a game up on Matt by picking his team against him and then winning. <laughs> right. I know. I know. But I've already picked two games that were different than Matt. I, I don't know if I want to push it for a third. So I'll – I'll begrudgingly go with the Rams in this, but I'm going to be really pissed off at the 49ers. <laughs> All right. Me too. Uh, 
But what do you think is really going to happen? You really think the Rams are going to win? Who are you asking? I, I, Smitty. I, I honestly, I have a a really, and that's why I, I keep going back and forth. I I have a gut feeling 49ers are going to win this. Um, they could. Watching watching them last week, uh, I know me and Matt were, were, were on Facebook kind of talking about it. Uh, the way they came out in the second half and, and the way – the, the way he plays a quarterback, uh, this guy is going to be, be an outstanding quarterback uh, in the NFL. Uh, just watching the adjustments that he made as a quarterback from the first half to the second half, never mind the adjustments from an offensive standpoint, but just the adjustments that he made. Uh, you can see that he's a guy with a great football mind. He understands what he's doing. He, he's uh, he, he's got great pocket presence. Uh, he, he really, uh, his understanding of defense and what he's seeing, you could really see come out in the second half. Uh, so it's, they, they really, they, I mean, they have themselves as a great quarterback. They just got to put people around him. All right. Now that the 49er circle jerk is over, Mark Cooper, you want to pick the game? <laughs> Oh, yeah, you got to go with the Rams. I mean, golf's been slinging it. Hurley's been running it. Um, I just think they have a superior roster, and, and uh, they'll, they'll just they'll, they'll be a smackdown on the Niners. Ooh, a smackdown. I like that. All right, this is my take on it. The Rams are a better team. The Rams need to win. The Rams will win the game. Um, I think this is the first week where you'll see Jimmy Garoppolo look human. But, and I think Matt can verify this. When he came out in the draft three years ago, I love Garoppolo, and I still do. I think what people are missing here is you're going to go up against Wade Phillips tomorrow or Sunday, and you're a rookie quarterback. If he comes out and destroys Wade Phillips' defense, then it'll really make me question how good he's going to be. And I already think he's going to be a great quarterback. And I think as long as the 49ers don't screw up draft picks or free agency – I think they're a playoff team within the next two years. With that being said, though, I just think Wade Phillips needing to win this game, I think he's going to show a lot of coverages, combinations and stuff, late stuff that Garoppolo's never seen. And I think the Rams will jump out early in this game. And then I think Garoppolo will adjust. They'll come back a little bit. But I look at the Rams winning this game something like 31 to 20. 31-23, 31-23, something like that. But Yeah, that's, oh, that's, that's pretty fair. Yeah, and, and I you know, want to pick the Niners just because I do. I have the same feeling Schmitty has, but when I look at it, i, I got to use a little common sense over my feelings because feelings get us in trouble, if you remember Aaron from Wisconsin. That's true. So... <laughs> Coop, you remember Aaron from Wisconsin? <laughs> yes, I do. See? Hey, and this is, this is the great ago. thing. Matt gets a hold of me and says that he wants to be on the college football show before Wisconsin played Ohio State. And he comes on the show with us. And he came up with a conspiracy theory of how since they could make funny. the Final Four that Ohio State would be told by the Big Ten to lay down and lose the game on purpose so they could get a team in the Final Four. Wow. And lose yeah. big. Much and then much, and then the next so week after they lost in the water. After they lost the next week, he thought that the game was fixed against Wisconsin and now he is no longer ever gonna watch college football again, so he didn't want to come on the show. After he'd come on the show to pick Wisconsin. There's a bunch of boogeymen out there. Yeah, and they're all in Wisconsin. It, it and they all funny. own one five millionth of the Green Bay Packers because they paid two hundred and fifty dollars. All right, guys. Right now, final words. Let's go. Who is your NFL MVP right now, Matt? Uh, I think it's Todd Gurley. I was going to go with Case Keenum. Uh, the possibility, you know, you're looking at uh, Tom Brady. You're looking at uh, Carson Wentz, but that's probably not going to happen. Russell Wilson. Uh, but I don't know if they get if they don't get in the playoffs. I don't see how you can give it to Russell Wilson. So. I'm looking at uh, Todd Gurley or maybe Case Keenum. I don't think Case Keenum made enough of a case 
no pun intended, for, for himself uh, this past week. He didn't look tremendously good. They just did enough to win the game. Todd Gurley is explosive, and what you do in the last month really is what everybody remembers, usually in the MVP race. So I, I think Todd Gurley has uh, made such a strong case that uh, I don't know if anybody's going to beat him out. All right, Brian? Yeah, I agree. Todd Gurley would be the guy, but but – and I, and I don't say this as a, as a Steelers yes, fan. Yes, you do. As, you do. As you as can entirely do. <laughs> because if you take Which the one? whole Dollar 15 Brown, weeks, we that would be like saying Jimmy here's, Garoppolo here's, should now be an NFL MVP. <laughs> I think Antonio here's, Brown would deserve consideration, but that injury probably. Yeah, and well, I think here's, Big Ben would be in my top I'll ten. Be, okay, I'm talking now. I'm talking. Go ahead. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I. I don't think Brown because of the injury, but uh, Le'Veon Bell, yeah, uh, just because he does everything. I, I think Gurley should win it, but I think you know Bell is a name that you know I, I won't be surprised to start hearing a little bit more from just because of everything he does. I mean, I mean him and him and uh, Gurley are a lot of a lot of like. Uh, so I, I I think though you you have to. You, you can't really give it to anybody else outside of Gurley. Right? But what he's done is amazing. All right, Coop. Well, you know what? Uh, that Brown injury was tough, and uh, I'm hope I hope he gets back because they they could use him, and I think that'll help Pittsburgh make a good run. But um, Gurley's got over 1,300 yards, and um, it's just a stud. And uh, so Matt made a pretty good case for him, and and I kind of agree with that. So I'm going to stick with Gurley. Yeah, and I, and, but I'll tell you what, Ben, go you got to throw Ben out there a little bit because of what he does. But every once in a while, Ben makes some stupid throws, kind of like a, um, gosh, like a – Brett Favre. Oh, sh- exactly, Favre. Yeah. And you just go, what? Go. what? And then he'll drop a dime in the corner of the end zone, and you go, oh, there's Ben again. So, yeah, I mean, uh, but so I, I consistently I think Gurley's going to – he should take it. Yeah, to me, I think Gurley's going to take it. My number two is Russell Wilson, whether they make the playoffs or not, just because he's played with no real offensive weapons, no real offensive line. The defense has been banged up, and he's still got them in position where if they win, they can make the playoffs. To me, I don't think it gets more valuable than that. Um, I think Bell's up there with Gurley, but once again, I think Gurley is playing with a surrounding cast that, His offensive line's not as good as what Bell's is. I don't think they've got the weapons at receiver. Jared Goff has played well, but he's not a Hall of Fame quarterback, which is what Big Ben is. So I think that's the reason I would go with Gurley a little more because I actually think you could take Bell off of the Steelers and they'd still win 10 games. I don't think you could take Gurley away from the Rams and they could win 10 games. Yeah, it's probably true. All right. Okay. Well, I thought we were having a good conversation and nobody answered me. I think, I think we're just kind of digesting it. I'm trying to picture how many points. Point. It was tough to argue. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I'm not. All right, guys. Um, if you were bored by this show, it's because the game sucked this week. But next <laughs> week, we'll be back with a playoff <laughs> show. Our fault. Which means this will be done in half the time. We're just talking about meaningful playoff games. We won't have to talk about, is this the week the Cleveland Browns get a win? Or is this a week where the Cincinnati Bengals decide not to play? Or is this a week where the Denver Broncos secede from the NFL and play D3 college football? None of those questions will be asked next week. It's all playoffs. Hopefully, Coop, can you come back next week for the playoffs? You bet. Okay. So, we'll say... 10 o'clock Eastern next Tuesday night again live on thegruelingtruth.net. I want to remind everybody that tomorrow night at 8 Eastern, myself, former Alabama offensive lineman Bill Searcy, and hopefully Schmitty will be with us to break down the college football Final Four. Huh? Yeah, I'm hoping. So hopefully they'll be here. We'll talk college Final Four. We'll talk about the Cotton Bowl, Ohio State, USC, all the big bowl games coming up this weekend because, let's face it, ain't nobody watched any bowl games to now unless they got a kid or a cousin playing into damn things. Um, 
Also, check out our Boxing Legends show Thursday. We'll be live with former junior welterweight champion, Cool Vince Phillips. Uh, you can also check out the shows we've done in the past couple of weeks, which we had Big George Foreman on last week. That was a great show. Former heavyweight champion Mike Weaver, former Olympic gold medalist Mark Breland was on, so make sure you catch all of that. Uh, Matt, you and Dexter are doing a 49er show this week? Not really sure. He got pretty busy with the holidays. We might just do a season in review next week with uh, hopefully uh, William Floyd or uh, Gary Plummer or someone like that on next week, so we'll see how that goes. We might get one in this week, but not sure with the holidays. All right, and of course, me and Joe Kelly will be back with the Cincinnati Bengals show. We haven't done one in a month because we refused to do it. We are kind of doing a kind of like a hunger strike, only it's a show strike until the Bengals get a real football coach. So hopefully, we'll be back sometime in the next ten years. But that's debatable the way the Bengals are run. Um, make sure you check out all of our shows on iHeart, iTunes, TuneIn. You can go to iTunes and actually download the Grueling Truth app which will give you access to all of our shows also. So for Mark Cooper, Brian Schmidt, Matt Andrew Scavage, I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.